You know, I like to talk about a lot of things. So let's talk about your skin and this sweltering heat. To help me talk about that, I have Dr. Andrew Ford, who's a dermatologist. I want to sink my teeth into this topic. We have at least, what, gone up into three digits in terms of the level of um, degrees underwater. So we are facing some serious heat across the globe, and Barbados is no exception. We've heard that um, we're going to be faced with this kind of heat well into what, um, October? So how do we start to deal with managing our skin and managing our general well-being? Yeah, well, definitely we want to protect our skin from ultraviolet radiation, which is uh, the source of some of, this, some of this heat. We also have to maintain our bodies as far as hydration is concerned. And if we have other skin conditions that may be aggravated, we have to also uh, mitigate and, and keep them in a healthy state and you know make sure they're not acting up because of the heat. Now you made mention of conditions. Um, there's so many other conditions that can affect um, your skin and then the heat can compound it. I'm thinking about th simple things like eczema, um, psoriasis, uh, and um, some of the other ailments that that, that, that might, um, skin allergens where you get you know the, Itchiness. Some people call it dermatitis. Am I right in saying that? Well, dermatitis and eczema, mm -hmm. they're equivalent words and are used interchangeably depending on the, the type of condition that you have. But certainly in, in our part of the world where atopy or sensitivity to the environment is very common, uh, there are many individuals with atopic eczema, which is a eczema that occurs in the body folds and is uh, exquisitely aggravated by heat as well as dryness and scratching. So uh, our temperatures now are, are very relevant where that's concerned so there are lots of people who are aggravated mm -hmm. by or increase uh, temperatures right now and they have to spend more time moisturizing and avoiding overheating and wearing clothing that would keep them cool you did mention psoriasis which is also uh, treated by sun uh, by you know the sun can sometimes help people to oh. not to have psoriasis but again you can have a heat aggravation or if you get a sunburn that can uh, aggravate your psoriasis. Melasma, mm -hmm. which is a discoloration of the curvatures of the face that occurs mostly in women and also in, in some men. Uh, ultraviolet light along with hormones and childbirth in, in the female can, can make that worse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, generally if you have a, a skin condition that af affects the folds of the body, then uh, heat will be a, a big problem if you have a uh, an issue on the face. Even acne. Acne can be aggravated by heat because the increased heat can cause you to produce more of the oils from the sebaceous glands and cause more clogging and therefore aggravate uh, the face and there's tropical acne there's some people that come in from let's say a, a colder country they come to Barbados they are the customers of the heat and they get acne on their on their trunk it's interesting that you should say that because I find that in colder climates my skin never looked better <laughs> yeah well some of us th you know extremes in in temperature benefit some people mm -hmm. and you know some of us are heat intolerant so cooler mm -hmm. uh, climates can help us but there are those who go into the colder climates and they get very dry and everything goes in reverse so it ah. depends on your condition and your genetics and other things but you want to be keep it somewhere in the middle so that it wouldn't be an extreme of one or the other there are some that will say but I born here as a Bajan shouldn't my skin adapt in addition to, to that no misnomer or notion there are gents out there that will say to you, man, the place is too hot, so I don't cream. I don't put on nothing because the place is too hot. Is this the solution, Dr. Ford? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, the, the way things relate to you really depends on your genetics. And your genetics uh, determines everything about you, in, including how you look and how your skin will behave. In terms of uh, sun sensitivity, it depends on, on the color of the skin and the Fitzpatrick skin type, one through six, with one being the lighter skin tones and six being the darker ones but still uh, the for genetics the fits Fitzpatrick 
scale. This is named after someone, obviously. Yes, a dermatologist <laughs> called Fitzpatrick. He uh, determined that one would be the blonde, blue-eyed, mm -hmm. uh, very pale person with okay. freckles who always burns but never tans. And, and the six would be like most of us here who think we can't burn, but we do, but we tan, tan mostly. Okay. But, but generally, as we mentioned earlier, some of the things like A to P or uh, the atopic dermatitis person or the person with another condition or someone who just has issues with body temperature regulation. There are people who sweat a lot, you know, hyperhidrosis. So there are people who have different issues and your, your medical issue can determine how well you can tolerate the heat. So it's more to do with genetics than if you were born here or mm -hmm. born elsewhere. Okay. From babes to the elderly, we're facing sometimes 30, 32 degrees um, Celsius in terms of the heat that we're living with. If I'm traveling with an infant child into the city or out to a park for a day's picnic, how should I dress that child and what kind of skin care would you recommend? Well, there are two, two issues there. One is uh, preventing sun damage, which will cause photoaging and issues later down in the child's life when it grows up, as well as acute things like sunburn and that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. it's also hydration as well and body temperature regulation. So there are a number of things you have to look at. Uh, in a hot environment, you need to dress in cool clothing. But if you want to protect your skin, you should cover as much of the skin as possible. Wear, wear hats, I mean... Uh, if you're older, you might wear shades or mm -hmm. you might be on an umbrella or somewhere where there isn't a lot of reflected light. But you also want to keep your hydration up because because it's so hot, you can have evaporation and loss of of uh, fluids from the body. And you mm -hmm. want to maintain the body in, in equilibrium and a, and a good environment. So depending on your age group, it really depends on how much sun you've had and how tolerant you are of the of the heat but definitely the hydration and preventing uh, UV damage from the skin which will have repercussions later on is really really important. You mentioned something called photo aging. I think I get a basic grasp of it but what exactly is photo aging? Well we're, we're all when we're really young we, we have very plump uh, firm skin mm -hmm. and photo aging is a real consequence of ultraviolet A which is uh, a type of ultraviolet radiation in the spectrum. Uh, ultraviolet B tends to burn the skin, but ultraviolet A is involved in photoaging. So your skin has structures and m usually you have collagen which supports the lower aspects of the of the epidermis and as you get older the collagen gets broken down, you get it transferred to something called elastin. So it becomes less plump, mm -hmm. less um, less firm and you get more sagging, more wrinkles, mm. more changes in the surface yeah. and also discolorations and that sort of thing. And that can be also uh, potentiated by, by habits like smoking or drinking or, or just getting lots of sunburns uh, at intervals or very bad sunburns or being in the sun a lot and not using uh, sun protection. So photoaging is something that you see later on. So you may have two individuals who may, you can have a twin. Mm -hmm. let's say an identical twin yeah. one lives in a cold climate one lives in Barbados and the one that lives in the in the climate with less UV radiation looks a lot younger uh, 40, 50 years later than the one who was who was here all along so that's full aging just has to do with the amount of injuries your, your skin has and it also has implications as it relates to the possibility of skin cancers either uh, melanoma or non-melanoma skin cancers so one of the important things with photo aging, in addition to trying to look good, is trying to maintain healthy skin that, that won't put you in danger of having a, a skin cancer later on. Isn't that something uh, that, uh, again, seems to attack a particular skin type as opposed to another? Or do persons high in melanin still stand a chance of developing skin cancer? Well, anyone can develop skin cancer, but of course, I mentioned the Fitzpatrick skin types and the the gradation one through six with one being the very fair Caucasian with blue eyes and freckles. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have a higher potential of uh, having a skin cancer of a of a non melanoma or melanoma type than uh, type six, which is the the Negro, the dark mm -hmm. the dark Negro. But we all have our our potential to have it, and other conditions can affect it. Let's say you happen to have vitiligo, which means that mm -hmm. you know you are actually 
genetically a type 6 but because of vitiligo you've lost uh, lots of melanin so you become more susceptible you may have a genetic enzymatic problem let's say xeroderma pigmentosum and you are unable to repair the damage from the, the sun because your skin has a method of repair of uh, photo damage so if your photo damage is impaired then that can make you more susceptible to cancers so in general I would say a darker skin type or a higher fixed patch skin type is less likely to have a skin cancer but there are other things that can that can make that that can alter the the balance there and the more sun you get and the more intense and you know compounded insults you get the more likely you are to get a skin cancer irrespective of the skin type that you have okay so if we go from the youngest spectrum to those who are elderly and you made good reference of uh, the skin losing a certain amount of collagen which mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned reduces itself to elastin yeah the yes but and the skin mm -hmm. is less it's less firm mm -hmm. and you know we when we're younger we have nice rounded cheeks and everything looks great the lines aren't there and then as we <laughs> keep looking over the decades you see more lines we wonder who's that person staring us, staring at us in the mirror. It's, it's still us, right? Just an older version. I, I'm sorry, I'm hearing Kupudan <laughs> in my head, reflections. But no, <laughs> families come out in their numbers. All may not be jumping, but they come out in their numbers to, to see the bands, to, to be a part of the festivities. How should um, someone who is um, more so aging than others um, protect themselves. I, I know you mentioned the making sure you wear a hat or a cap or sunglasses, but is there a, a different grade of skin protection um, that one should look for? Should our gents make it their business to wear skin protection? And um, depending on the age bracket, what level or percentage? Well, you, the important thing is that uh, younger age groups have to be protected because by age 18 we could have between 30 to 80 percent of our uh, ultraviolet exposure and that has big implications as the decades go on okay. so it's important to take care of of the younger uh, people in the in the population and to take care of them because at the early stage they are less aware and able to take care of themselves so um, the clothing and all the things that we mentioned but uh, of course everyone can wear sunblock mm -hmm. male or female can wear sunblock or <laughs> or you know something that can protect them physically mm -hmm. so it's very important to do that but by the time someone is an adult they have had so much ultraviolet radiation already if something's gonna happen to them the damage has been done so all the work should be done in the earlier age groups that's where the priority is so from birth through the first few decades mm -hmm. it's really really important to to do that but uh, we mentioned sun protection and that is important and we can have physical blocks or chemical blocks so um, There's you such can a thing? yeah you can mm -hmm. have a zinc or titanium block but of course it's not cosmetically uh, more pleasing because you could actually see it on the skin and it has colors and it may look chalky or or different so a woman mm -hmm. wouldn't really want to put that on on her face and go out to to an event because unless you're you happen to be on Kadumat day where you can <laughs> do stuff and maybe <laughs> put that into your costume but of that course sounds, that <laughs> sounds a lot like what we see some of the cricketers yes wear. definitely so okay. so cricketers uh you know the australians or the english did put mm -hmm. some block uh on their on their lips and mm -hmm. some parts of the face and, and it's very effective because it's physically reflecting the light mm -hmm. so it's like having a covering on the skin that doesn't allow the light to penetrate the chemical versions are are maybe less efficient but they also do a, do a good job but you shouldn't really think that having some protection uh, allows you or gives you license to be to spend more time in the sun because it's not really time in the sun it's about the intensity so we mentioned uh, intensity so that has a lot to do with the time of the day so from 10 a.m. to 2 that's when the ultraviolet radiation will be at its most intense so it could be cloudy it may not look as dark as as, as bright sorry as you might think so you might feel safer but the ultraviolet light is still penetrating and then uh, the ultraviolet A or ultraviolet B then it's penetration tr through through glass so getting back to the question I think it's very important that you you cover up and you use your sun protection 
but you also put yourself in a situation where you can get shade because that's really important okay of course someone who's jumping in a band is, is exposed to the elements and unfortunately the costumes are are you know you know they're Very conservative uh, <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> amounts of clothing that are used so yes they do so you are you are exposed mm -hmm. in a in a big way and you know you can get your sunburns some people will get their first sunburn mm -hmm. uh, on kadumat day now um they talk about beauty being more than um, just skin deep. If we look at the ladies, especially on the same Grand Kadumat Day, the makeup and all of those things. Makeup today normally has a certain amount of SPF. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that you would recommend outside of the jump up? That's one. And two, for the gents, obviously, they might not necessarily lean towards wearing a form of foundation, but what level of SPF protection should they be looking to, to wear if they're going to be jumping? Well, uh, SPF really has to do with the multiple... If you don't have on a sun protection at all, mm -hmm. then the SPF tells you the number of multiplicative exposures to intensity of ultraviolet radiation you would need to get the same sunburn so theoretically it's not to do with time it's to do with intensity so SPF 30 means that you would need that you know it would take 30 times as long in terms of intensity okay so everyone male or female would need to have uh, sun protection of course it's not common for men to to choose uh, makeup as as that form they may just use a moisturizer that has an SPF mm -hmm. but women also have the the luxury of, of using makeup and then that brings into the question is the makeup going to be too occlusive will they have either an, an acne breakout later or will they tend to get a, a heat rash because of of the the occlusive nature of the of the makeup but everyone needs to do it so I, I think that we shouldn't say we shouldn't divide it in terms of the sexes but we also have to realize that there's some people that these uh, sunblocks and and moisturizers just they just don't agree with them. So you can have an irritant reaction or an allergic mm -hmm. reaction. So there's some people who just can't wear them. In which case they may need some sort of headdress and shades, or they may need uh, a physical block instead of a chemical block. So th the important thing is that over time you get to know your skin. You get to know what you can tolerate and what irritates you and what doesn't irritate you. But you also have to be aware of how much uh, can you take? How sensitive are you and how, you know, to, to sun exposure? So if you're someone who tends to get burnt easily, then you have to do more than someone who doesn't. Mm -hmm. But still, you have to understand that even though you're not burning, you're still being damaged over time. So you also want to reduce that because you don't want to be at 50 or 60 uh, having a consequence of, of something that you, you did in fun, fun earlier on. Okay. So... Having said that, if we look at um, the patient numbers, do you find you get an increase um, around certain peak times of the year? Is crop over one of those periods? And what are the usual complaints uh, when you see patients with regard to skin conditions? Well, uh, after uh, crop over, definitely you see more people with with what Bayesians would call a heat rash, which you call mm -hmm. uh, miliaria. So that's a situation where the sweat ducts tend to be occluded and and that gives you a very bumpy rash that stings and prickles so it's called prickly heat mm -hmm. um, so that can vary it could be just very fine bumps it could be bumps with clear fluid or or a larger version of the bumps and that can go on for several weeks because if the person is unable to cool down if let's say the crop over is finished but they have a job that's that's in a lot of heat mm -hmm. then that can perpetuate that condition and it can become chronic and it can change in appearance and, and be quite mystifying to, to doctors. Also, we mentioned things that, that get worse. Uh, people with atopic eczema will get worse during those times for sure. Uh, some people with psoriasis will get worse. Some women or men with, with the pigmentation of melasma will get worse. And there are some very rare conditions. There, there's a, a whole family of, of, of people in Barbados who get a blistering disease that involves the folds. So when this time of the year is on, uh, you find that they have this blistering condition mm -hmm. in the folds of their body. 
and and there are a few others let's say rosacea rosacea is another condition that you get yes. on the face mm -hmm. and rosacea may be seen more commonly in in lighter fitzpatrick skin types or more towards type one mm -hmm. through four but you get these red bumps and bumps with uh with pus in them mm -hmm. or there may be people who have lots of veins in the face and they become more red and flushed and you know that can be also a problem so it really depends on is heat going to be your your trigger and if that's the case all those heat related things we're going to see more of those things but there are some uncommon skin conditions that you will see that are are primarily due to to heat and the sun and you know they can cause uh, bumps or blistering on the face some they call a polymorphic light eruption and there there's also another very rare one uh, called hydrovaciniforme where you get blisters and scars on on the face okay. so you may also be someone who's on medication let's say you're on doxycycline you have acne you're on doxycycline and you happen to be one of the few people who get a phototoxic uh, reaction or become more photosensitive because of doxycycline so you tan faster and you can get darkening or rashes let's say you're someone who's on an acne cure medicine called roaccutane mm -hmm. which makes you more sun sensitive so uh, if you depend on your medication or it could be a high blood pressure medication so your medications have to be taken into consideration you should check to see if the medication you're on is something that can be that can interact with the sun and similarly because it's crop over you can go through a lot of shrubs take a detour from your from your jump or you can <laughs> be be doing stuff with citrus or mm -hmm. other things and the interaction of the sun with this um, citrus or let's say with a plant can give you a, a blistering dermatitis or some discolorations that are unusual so there are many ways primarily and secondarily that uh, it can you can get more skin conditions during crop over but definitely I'd say uh, here this is a time when you get a lot more heat rashes and a lot more eczema for sure I've seen instances where um, sunburn results in a lot of peeling and you see a lot of the peeling sometimes um, along the hairline, sometimes across the eyebrows or if you have facial hair as some gents do, you see it in those areas apart from you know it beating down on, on, your, on your back or your shoulders. Uh, how do you treat to those situations and um, obviously that in itself is fairly uncomfortable that burny sensation um, making mm -hmm. the skin so sensitive to touch so how do we manage that well you you've described a, a collection of of clinical signs which actually fits into something called seborrheic dermatitis or or type of psoriasis called sebo psoriasis so okay. what i will do is i'll talk about sunburns uh first sunburn occurs when your skin basically overheats mm -hmm. and you get an inflammatory reaction so that's in involves swelling and redness and if it's really bad enough uh, blisters small blisters mm -hmm. and the skin just feels really hot so it's very it can be very uncomfortable and painful and that occurs in the areas that are exposed to the sun so the peeling that you mentioned occurring with it that happens after when it's resolving you get that peeling reaction yeah when someone gets a, a dryness around the hairline dry eyebrows dryness in the in the crease of the nose, dryness mm -hmm. where you get where a beard or mustache would be, then that's the seborrheic dermatitis or the sebo psoriasis, which the two of them are distinguished by severity of, of peeling because the psoriatic uh, patient's going to have a much more profound peeling that would lead to a kind of a silvery scale appearance, while the yes. seborrheic dermatitis is much more subtile and and, and less severe but those individuals can be triggered because of the heat or because of the stress brought on by the heat or you know if they happen to be ill around that time or something happens so they will um, tend to flare up so those individuals with the separate dermatitis in the pattern of the hairline the eyebrows and the beard area they're usually treated uh, with moisturizers and mm -hmm. and very weak steroid applications for short periods or steroid free anti-inflammatories the sunburn however you have to cool the skin so it will require uh, wet compresses you have to treat the discomfort so you may need uh, painkillers and sometimes you can also use an anti-inflammatory cream and moisturize and then you have to let that 
that skin that was damaged by the sunburn that upper layer you have to let that peel and that that takes time but you can't you can't rush it you have to to let it let it go so you know you if you are someone who used a sun protection or a sunblock or a sunscreen and you had an an a photo reaction because of it because you weren't it wasn't suited to you then you could get a similar type of eczema reaction on all the areas that that you put the put it on but it may be worse in the areas exposed to the sun wow do you wear sunblock do you choose to wear a hat i see a lot of guys wear the hats apart from just what comes with the costume let me know i'd like to find out how you protect yourself and protect your skin now dr ford coming out of crop over getting a good dose of sunburn and trying to heal from it are there any homeopathic and I put that in inverted commas <laughs> homeopathic remedies that can assist an old wife's tale it worked for me well at least I think it did an old wife's tale told me that I could use oatmeal well oatmeal is used for a lot of uh, inflammatory situation where the skin is irritated so mm -hmm. I mean I, I think that I, I've never uh, advised that but it mm -hmm. doesn't sound far-fetched I think aloe vera is used a lot mm -hmm. and wet compressors because the the wet compressor or wet towel it, you know it helps to cool mm -hmm. it also puts uh, fluid back into the skin okay. so that can be one of the easier things to do an aloe vera gel tends to be very soothing mm -hmm. uh, in in case of sunburn but oatmeal is used a lot in in situations, uh, homeopathic situations with eczema and some other things. So that doesn't sound too too far fetched to me. Okay. Any other um, suggestions as to how we can combat some of the the um, other irritants that we get from the crop over, especially the ones that occur in the bending of the arms? Uh, I can't remember which type of eczema you said this is. Yeah, that was the atopic. Uh, mm -hmm eczema right so anything homeopathic that can be used for that or is medication the recommended solution well the the important thing is is the prevention during the the mm -hmm. event and keeping cool because that's why sometimes passing through these areas where you get uh, sprayed with water or or maybe even wetting wearing sleeves you know mm -hmm. the like the sporting sleeves and wetting them there are things you can do to keep the skin from overheating that's going to be really important um, when it comes to to these conditions though moisturizing is very important being gentle with the skin and not irritating it very important so they're the general principles but over time you know the things that irritate and and don't irritate you you just stick to that and once you do that then you should get the best result varying slightly off the topic yeah. but still to come back let's talk liver spots Bajan liver spots, not the ones that we Google and we hear is as a result of aging, mm -hmm. but the ones that your parents said you had too much sweet drink, you yes. had too much acid. Does the liver spots or what we put in our bodies that causes the liver spots, does that also help to exacerbate um, skin conditions that can be derived from the sun? Well, the so-called liver spots, or we call it pityriasis versicolor, is a condition uh, on its own. You need to and repeat that <laughs> long name again. Pityriasis versicolor. So pityriasis means mm -hmm. dryness. Versicolor refers to the ability of it to appear in different colors. So it can be skin colored, it can be lighter, it mm -hmm. can be darker. So this is caused by a commensal on the skin that is usually there. But some people in hot conditions, especially in our climate, can grow it more than, than others. So... In that case, uh, those people have patches on the on the body that tend to be dry. At first, they're the same color as the skin. Mm -hmm. And then if they go into the sun, it will be a lighter color than the skin. If they don't go into the sun, it will be a darker color. But there will be patches that you'll see, especially after you've bathed. And if you go out mm -hmm. in the sun, they get very red and irritated. So that's something that requires an antifungal and would be aggravated by being in the sun at crop over because... If you didn't do the sun before that, th those patches may have been just a normal skin color. And if you moisturize them, they would go away. But by the time you get into your crop over and do your, do your jump, mm -hmm. uh, later on, the, the physical block of the growth of the organism on the skin is going to cause that area to get lighter. Mm -hmm. 
okay. because the ultraviolet light won't be able to penetrate it so it will cause a cosmetic uh, you know enrichment of the of the problem that you can then see so uh, it doesn't have anything to do with sweet drinks uh, no? I think that is uh, something that we should try to expunge from from the psyches and memories of people it has to do with your ability to grow it and, and mostly heat so as you know linking back to our topic of overheating I think that's one of the conditions that we could see a lot more in these uh, hot times Wow now I don't even want to imagine outside getting any hotter than this all the way into October but coming out of Grand Cadument and going back into the school environment our little ones are not really paying attention to that as long as you know the the bell goes and and it's lunch time or it's play time they're out and about what tidbits would you like to suggest from moms and dads to equip their children with and hopefully get them to practice whilst they're out at play well again it comes back to protecting the skin and creating that constant environment in the body and preventing dehydration so from the hydration standpoint you have to depending on how hot you get and how much you sweat you have mm -hmm. to replace the fluid so you may need to take bits of fluid uh, during your active exercise when it's when it's very hot so of course we know what is really good and there are some other drinks that have electrolytes and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing but um, certainly uh, drinks uh, high in sugar won't be won't be <laughs> as good Mm -hmm. And you know, for the adults who might be uh, doing Spirited? stuff and having <laughs> spirits, they can become dehydrated. Mm -hmm. But uh, and otherwise, uh, at school, you should be in your school uniform or in your games uniform. So mm -hmm. the you know the center of the body should be well covered. It's only the 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 limbs that will be exposed and and the face. So uh, wearing a hat is good, depending on the sport. If you're playing some mm -hmm. sports like football, you won't you won't wear a hat. But if you're playing tennis or if you're playing cricket, you know you can wear your hat, and that can help you. Uh, sunglasses do help because we have to understand that uh, the sun does affect the the eyes, so you can get it can cause let's say cataracts later on. Not okay. not in a child, or you can get this um, growth on the surface of the eye that's a bit thicker and looks red that's called a pterygium that you get from the corner of the eye going towards the center wow. uh, of the eye and you know some people can have difficulties with their the focusing center the, the the macular area of the eye and have degeneration so protecting the eyes is important too as well as uh, protecting the skin we talked about sun blocks as mm -hmm. well uh, sun protection uh, applications so all those things would be really important but you have to know when you feel like you're overheating because okay. uh, it doesn't happen very often but you don't want to get your body temperature to be too high mm -hmm. it's very uncommon for someone to have a heat stroke uh, in Barbados even though it's it's uh, a very hot place but as the temperatures get higher we have to be aware of it and hope that people's body temperatures wouldn't rise high enough to get get a heat stroke because a heat stroke uh, refers to when the temperature may be around uh, almost getting towards 40 degrees C and it could affect all the body systems and cause disorientation and wow. uh, collapse and, and other serious uh, ramifications so uh, you must always uh, try to keep cool and know when it's time to take a break know when it's time to get some shade know when it's time to rehydrate and protect yourself because as you said we don't want to be sun damaged uh, later on sunburn and the sea because you mentioned people tend to know when they're, you know, overheating. But um, sometimes you could actually find yourself in water. And because you're in the water, everything feels good. Yes. Until you get home and somewhere along the line, you got this burning <laughs> across the back. And if you're wearing one of those swimsuits that, that had a strap going here and the other strap going there all around that area that was exposed it just itches and it burns so when we're looking at that um, can we still use the same concept apply the sunblock even though we're going into water which might wash it off yeah well first of all we have to be aware that when you're at the sea there are many reflective surfaces in the in the sea and okay. conditions so 
the sand is going to be reflecting ultraviolet light and then within the water you're going to have reflections so you could actually be getting more ultraviolet exposure when ah. you're at the sea uh, than, mm -hmm. than in the average place and then there will be windows and other things around or that, that may be doing it so being in the water gives you that that cool sensation and a false sense of security that allows you to to get a more intense mm -hmm. ultraviolet exposure and therefore uh, a worse uh, type of burn. But um, what was the what was the second question about that? Because I got the sunblock because we're mm -hmm. going into water. Yeah. Well, with the sunblock, you you have sunblocks that are water you know, resistant. Water resistant because mm -hmm. they no longer say waterproof because it such a thing doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, you have to reapply your your mm -hmm. water resistant sunblock or sunscreen you know every half an hour every hour and it depends on how active you are how, if you're doing a lot of rolling around and how much activity you're doing in the water the application is really important because it's going to come off even mm -hmm. though it, it's a bit thicker and tends to stay on more so sometimes we feel that once we put it on uh, you it. know at eight o'clock we mm -hmm. don't have to put it on again but it's important to reapply it. and that's where especially for the younger children the the parents come into mm -hmm to play because the parent has to do the, all the reminding when the kids are having such a good time they're not going to stop to to reapply come put back on some more sunblock on you and then there are mm -hmm. rash guards uh, which are uh, clothing that are UV protective that you can wear when you're at the beach it's not not as pleasing uh, especially for the females not to especially if you have that figure you won't <laughs> be able to show it off as well in a, in a rash guard as you would in a bikini but Wearing these, mm -hmm. uh, wearing that type of clothing, especially for younger children, is very important to protect their skin and still allow them to enjoy that healthy activity and get some benefits from the sun. Because we we've been talking a lot so far about the sun and the things that it can do that we don't like, but still there's a vitamin D aspect and and that feeling of wellness and healthiness and and you know even people who are down feel better when mm -hmm. they're the sun mm -hmm. but the sun still has big benefits you know with our immune system and our bones and, and and other things so it's a balance it's a balance we have to strike where it's concerned you mentioned children and also making sure that they um, get that reapplication of sunblock but one of the symptoms that um, I often hear little ones complain about no physical rash that you can see but complaints of being incredibly hot mm. and itchy and no matter what you do the itching the itchiness feels prickly it doesn't seem to go anywhere and you find them scratching all over but yet they're more so giving themselves the damage because of the scratching you can't see a rash mm. what are some of the causes of these well there is a, a very uh, rare condition called solar urticaria where you can get more histamine released in your body because of the sun and also so in those cases the individuals if they're light skinned enough you may see redness or if, mm -hmm. if it's bad enough you may see even wheels or as Beijing was, would say whales oh. uh, so you can see swellings and then there's something called aquagenic urticaria where there's some individuals who exposure to water for a certain amount of time cause the same release of histamine that can cause itching but what you've described could be the onset, the early onset of prickly heat or the heat rash, and that mm -hmm. could be someone that's going to have the manifestations of it later. The The sweat is trying to come out. It can't come out, so you get that prickly, stinging sensation, and that could be the, the beginning of uh, their uh, heat rash. Wow. Also, there are lots of insects, so there can be insect bites, or you could be in the beach and or in the sea and happen to get uh, sea bathers rash which is uh, bites from from organisms in the, in the sea yes so uh, there are different things that can cause uh, what you've described but I believe it could be the onset of of that heat rash without seeing the rash or it could be that urticaria or hives because of water or the Sun itself so so they aren't as common but they it can happen but also being in seawater for some time, you know, it can make the skin a bit dry and and kind of aggravate it over time, depending on the type of skin that you have. So if your skin is starting to get dry, because you know sometimes when you come out of the sea, you look kind of as Bajans would say, yeah, ashy or <laughs> scruffy. So so one of the symptoms of of being dried out like that is is itching. So it really depends on 
on your response and how much you like to scratch when you itch and how much histamine you have in the body and how you react to, to such adversity that would determine the reaction. A lot of it just by the time they get down to the mighty Rhino Highway, I nearly said Spring Garden. <laughs> A lot of Bajans, when they, uh, you know, depart from the band, they go straight into the water. Yeah, after going hot. through, yeah, <laughs> after going through hot. all of that that sun, so you know, and you mentioned some of the things that can that can go wrong with the the sand reflecting. So you kind of could find yourself in a situation where you further exacerbate the problem. So having said that, let's encapsulate a couple tips for our jumpers and for our spectators as well. Well, the important thing that you should do is be aware of your medications, your, your history as it relates to your dermatological problems, and be aware of, of what your exposure or risk is of being in the sun for a long time. Uh, you should moisturize and use a sunblock or a sunscreen, depending on a physical block, if, okay. you, if you can, if it fits in with your costume or chemical block, which is a sunscreen. You also have to be aware to, to reapply it. Uh, you have to keep your skin as cool as possible and, and if you're lucky enough, cover as much of it as, as possible. <laughs> Definitely. I'm and still that, trying cooling to figure skin, this one out. <laughs> cooling the skin, <laughs> bigger bikini. Cooling the skin, <laughs> cooling the skin has to do with putting uh, fluids on it, mm -hmm. uh, wet compresses, yes. that sort of thing. And also hydration is very important, yeah. making sure that you drink enough water, that your core temperature doesn't, doesn't uh, go too high. Mm -hmm. um, protecting your eyes from, from that ultraviolet exposure. Uh, trying to, to drink enough so that the alcohol won't make you too de dehydrated if you're, if you're drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, if you get a chance to get some shade, get that shade. <laughs> and you know, if you have any accessories that are sheer but can help your costume then certainly wear them because that can help to reduce the ultraviolet radiation but certainly after you've done your reveling and you if you notice anything that is untoward with the skin then you should have it checked out once it's not something as simple as just a sunburn that you can handle uh, you know you, we mentioned the heat rash we mentioned the aggravation of the other things we mentioned mm -hmm. the the intrinsic things like atopic eczema you mentioned the unusual things like solar urticaria. Uh, you know, it's a learning experience. With every jump, you learn more, and and you you have to you know take care of yourself better each time. Uh, and there's also the physical traumas of the toes and losing oh. nails and and you know, because let's say you have psoriasis and you bump your toe, then the next thing that would happen is that you have a, a, a nail that's unstuck for from months or years and wow. with color changes and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned the individuals with the with the fungus on the on the skin that can show up more after mm -hmm. but again you want to avoid the excessive intense exposure and mitigate that as much as possible hydrate well and try not to not to get sunburnt if you can help it do use you, your sunblock do you jump dr ford no i've never jumped you've I, never I am, jumped yeah i've never jumped so i've been uh <laughs> trying to try to keep my skin in as good shape as possible not sure I mean genetics I'm not sure how kind genetics has been to me but <laughs> it's done you well you possibly could, could take a chance do exactly what the doctor says make sure that you hydrate make sure that you put on your skin protection your moisturizer all of those things and afterwards some good old-fashioned self-care is also very important if anything strange comes up see your doctor Dr. Ford, we should do this again. Let's not wait for another heat wave. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs>